Monday, February 13th. We have a couple of special meetings today. We'll start off with these special health services. Good evening, everybody. We will open up the health services committee meeting at 6 01 this evening. We have four proposed action items. First one, authorizing agreement, Green County Mental Health Community Services Board and the Mental Health Association of Columbia Green Counties, Inc. True. True and Homer. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's carried. Authorizing agreement for the County Community Services Board and the Mental Health Association of Columbia Green Counties for MCAT services. So Vera and Lucas. Vera and Lucas. Lucas. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's carried. Authorizing agreement for the County Mental Health, CSB, and Northeast Parent and Child Society and Budget Amendment. Davis. Bloomer. Davis and Bloomer. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's carried. Authorizing contract, Mental Health Association of Columbia Green Counties, Inc., Youth Clubhouse, and Budget Amendment. Over. Chairwoman Handel, I just have a question for Jason. Um, do we ever get like a synopsis of what the clubhouse is actually doing to the kids, especially over the last couple of years coming out of the pandemic? I don't think you know, it's normal, but it's in the past. Yeah, I'd like to know exactly, you know, what are they doing for the kids or with the kids? You know, because they have all kinds of programming. And, you know, we, we I see them in meetings, you know, local community meetings. I'm thinking about things all the time, but I can certainly do something more formal. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Patty. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 That is carried. Is there anything else from the House of this committee? I wish I should well, know that we do have Mike Ryan, Amanda Lyons, and Craig Seaberg on. Uh, case anybody needs to ask them. Motion to adjourn. I will second that. We are adjourned. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the special public safety committee meeting to order at six oh five. Um, there's two proposed action items. First one is the Green County Legislature State Environment Quality Review Act or CEPRA notice of intent to declare lead agency status for the construction of the Green County Justice Center. Martinez Davis. Martinez Davis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> and the second uh, proposed action item is to establish capital project Number one, two, three, the Green County Justice. <coughs> Vera Lennon. Vera Lennon. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Anything else to come before public safety at this time? Motion closed. Lennon and Hango closed. <coughs> We will open County Services Committee at 6.06, and we have uh, Veteran Service uh, uh, Coordinator, whatever. <laughs> Chief, <laughs> Director, Head, Head Pool Bob, <laughs> Director, all those things. Cook and bottle water. <laughs> Sure. Um, so we have something we could. Oh. 
I actually sent this to you all in an email this afternoon. Um, I wasn't planning on standing up here. I thought maybe you could just flip it over and, uh, <laughs> and let me know your thoughts. But um, so the uh, um, there is a space available adjacent to the suite that we're currently in in the Green Medical Arts Building. Um, I've been looking at it since last year. I actually accounted for it in our budget for the, for the lease, the, le the projected lease cost. I've reached out to CMH. Um, this is our this is our current space. This is um, the uh, this is the waiting room. It's very crowded. It's cluttered. The door opens into the reception window. We don't have space for different compliance posters that we're supposed to have. We don't have space to put resource resource materials out. Um, some of you have been to the waiting room where we've tried to host small events and it's just very, very crowded. So this is our hallway, which we're using as storage. The middle picture, well, actually both of the first two pictures, um, that is supposed to be a computer desk that veterans can come in and, and sit down, have a workstation and use a computer, you know, whether they write a resume or whatever they need to do. We can't do it because we have no place to put that stuff. We have absolutely no storage at all whatsoever, except for that little uh, that little shower in the bathroom um, that was repurposed with four shelves. And then also all the cleaning supplies because um, the county comes in, Buildings and Grounds comes in and does our cleaning and they leave their cleaning supplies there so they don't have to truck them back and forth, which I'm not complaining about, is that we don't have any space. Um, this is our administrative assistance office. The middle picture, you can see the, our filing system um, and also partly storage. Tom has come in before and told me to get all that stuff off the top. I'm sorry, it's back. There's just no place to put it. Um, every, just every nook and cranny of the office space is cluttered with boxes, with cleaning supplies, with um, office supplies with files. This here on the left is actually our veteran service, our part-time veteran service officer's office. In order um, to get to that office, you have to walk through his office. And then those are four high, two deep stacks of file boxes that we have no place to put files. You can't <coughs> it because of the windows and the heating systems that were left in along the windows that are not actually in use anymore. <laughs> There's no place to put filing cabinets. It's also our break room, so it's kind of hard to see, but in the right-hand picture, that's a refrigerator, a microwave, and a coffee pot. So when his name is Al, when Al has a client in there, there's no break room, he can't get in and out of her office or we have to interrupt them. And then on top of that, there's only about three feet of space behind his chair to actually move. So, you know, if he has a client who has family members who'd like to sit in with them, there's really just no space. This is Tyler's office. Again, uh, file, filing boxes, um, all kinds of, paper and, and folders and things stored on top of Tyler's hutch. And this is my office, more filing boxes. Um, just, I have a little bit more room than they do, but you still wouldn't be able to put a filing cabinet in there because there'd be no place for anybody to sit. Um, so this is actually just a, a rough sketch. We got the floor plans from CMH, from Brian Mahoney, Mahoney. That would be a rough sketch of what we would want to do if we combined the two suites, um, it would give us a hospitality room. We'd have a kitchen with a break room that we would try to do like a training kitchen so that our vet to vet guys could actually use that since they don't have access to one. Um, we have a nice pleasant waiting area that when veterans walked in, you know, they would feel like we actually appreciated them and not looking at stacks of boxes and what kind of looks like garbage to me. I mean, we've done our best to make it look neater. We keep getting stuff out there, we have a bunch of stuff out today actually, but I mean, I just, I still have to put the files somewhere. And I feel like when a veteran comes in and they see stacks and stacks of file boxes, you know, they're already wondering, is that where my file is going? It just, in my opinion, doesn't really lend confidence to um, our ability to, to serve them with, I'm sorry, um, to, anyway, yeah. So it just is unpleasant. Um, so as far as the budget's concerned, the money for the lease was already is already approved. 
However, we need money to <coughs> renovate. And last year we were awarded $50,000 from an estate. Um, we just received 10,000 retro payment from New York State of aid to, to localities for veteran service agencies. And we have 25,000 pending. So that's $85,000 in unallocated funds that I'm asking to use to renovate the space, the, the two spaces, two combined suites into one so that we can actually spread out, have a conference room, have storage, have a space for our van drivers, um, you know, have the kitchen with the break room, maybe have two bathrooms. Um, so that's yeah. it. <laughs> well, there already are two. <laughs> you have an estimate on how much it would be? I don't I don't have an estimate on how much it would be. I don't know if it would if the eighty five thousand would completely cover that. We would probably need some more furniture. Obviously we would need lots more filing cabinets. Um but I, I, I wasn't able to really do that because I without knowing if you're gonna approve this, I haven't been able to go forward and, and find out who would actually do the renovations, whether the county would do the renovations or CMH is going to you know do what they do and, and then charge us. Um, but uh, no. What is the lease for CMH? Uh, it's a three-year rolling. Five year. So we have to five years. Five, it's been, no, it was five, five years. Five years. Uh, um, or what did you say? They're about the same, like about a thousand square feet. Um, I'm sorry, that's not yeah, cool. that right? ten thousand. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, Single net lease, so utilities, uh, you know, I think I'm, everything from the campus standpoint and the base rent, we just responsible for the internal we have of it. Um, I want to say it's about $20 a square foot. Um, is, I'm going that way there. Um, we're not, we're, we're in the high 20s now. I don't remember exactly that figure. I would rather see. What you're trying to accomplish and what you estimated cost would be. Some of the work can be done with county forces uh, when right. you get into electrical and that kind of stuff. We have to farm that out from a building code standpoint. I mean, Michelle I and I have been you know, dancing on this thing for a number of months, talking <clears throat> peripheral about is veteran services going to stay in the medical arts building as, as we contemplate of the building? We talked about. We want to separate our services from the medical arts building, kind of a gray area. Um, the the reason for that is because the VA clinic is there, so so it's it was right. sort of a six and one half. One stop shop, but, you know. Plus the medical services, they can get you know, dialysis, or X rays, or whatever. So it does make sense for us to remain in the in the building rather than contemplate a relocation to a county owned facility. But then a veteran might be going to two two locations. But it's a county office. That's what I'm saying. It's like now we're we're I don't want to say held hostage, but we're held to CMA. Oh yeah, it's not cheap. It's, it's not cheap square footage. Right. So they've, we, they've kind of proven to be inflexible in the past. If the space is yours if you want it. Uh, but it's you know it's a. I just don't see enough of the scope of what what you're trying to accomplish and how much it's going to cost. I mean, if you came with a design that this is what we're going to do, knock these walls down, and it's going to cost so much. But I mean, it's, there's just not enough information yet. I think we need some estimates, right? Right. Yeah. Got to, got to go Michelle, uh, when it comes to veterans' records, do they have to be treated then, say, your other county records that would be at your records management? I mean, um, is that actually, the reason for all the records record, at your site? Records management. Um, brought all the records back to us a few years ago <laughs> because I advised that we were not able to destroy all of the records if we scanned them into the electronic system. Some things must be kept in paper form, and so they were they were returned to us. It was, like 20, it was a six of one and twenty nine file boxes. Why do you have to file and still keep half the paper? Are you better off just keeping the paper? Right. Um, right. Because like a DD-214 has to be yeah. kept in its original format. We can't, we can't scan that type of a document. <laughs> but say we do get our records management down the road straightened out, those records could go to a site in records management, as opposed to being kept in your office. Some of them, yes. Because right. but... you're paying $20 a square yeah. foot for office space to store records. Right. So, uh, That's expensive real estate. 
I, I think we, the, the records probably when you have a deceased veteran, you know, maybe those the types of records that can now go over not going to be yeah, accessed. Yeah, so archived right. records. Right. 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 Versus an active files. file, you're going to have some stuff that we got to have originals. We do. They wouldn't have to be locked up for a HEPA or something like that. I mean, they, sitting there on the floor. And... They they have to be protected for HIPAA, so we're actually it's challenging. It's challenging to be compliant because when someone comes in and sits in one of those offices and can see names on the boxes, that, that is actually just not HIPAA compliant because all of those all of those records are basically going to be for some sort of a medical claim, and just the name on the boxes is is not compliant. So so right. We're also not OSHA compliant with things stored on top of. But it's not just records. It's like all of our office supplies. It's all our cleaning supplies. It's you know having an office space for the VSO that other people don't need to walk through. We you know, don't have a break room, um, and it's just it, it's time. It hasn't been painted since we moved in in 2015. The floors are pretty um, unsightly. They just it's a. It doesn't we, seem like it fits the bill we're supposed to be doing anyway. No, nothing that should be said is in compliance. So. <laughs> what if you just moved in the other one and you didn't do any capital improvements to it? The other one's the same, the same size. size. Yeah, but if you keep your files and clerk of the works or whatever in one, then you have a more professional atmosphere in another office. And you have That's almost like a storage type unit. Mm -hmm. Talk about <laughs> duplicate type of doesn't get a that's mirror expensive image. Storage. That's that's expensive storage. storage. Right. So, Right, I think we actually. It seems like we've outgrown we're, we're where we are and have to look for something different because. Well, I think that brings a short <laughs> point. You know, do we then incorporate that into this community services idea? So, would there be enough space with the with the new addition for sharing with the Dwyer guys from Carroll? Yes, that's part of the plan too. Was um, oh, it's gone, but was to make a hospitality room out of one section that they would be able to come in and use. Um, I don't know if they would be able to move everything here, but one of the problems they run into is the after no, no access after hours. So we wanted to make it friendly to them where they could use the hospitality room and the break room kitchen <coughs> area um, and also the modular workspaces there. I thought, you know, if we did like cubicles or something, at least for, for two desks, that, that would give them some space to, to work around that, that they would be able to at least go back and forth and we can access that building at any time because we get. I'm, I'm assuming that the services you provide and the services they provide will overlap quite a bit. Um, I wouldn't say overlap, but because they are actually providing non-clinical therapy. We don't, we don't provide therapy. We help connect the veterans with resources. Um, and the only real service that we provide aside from um, aside from ad advocacy and, and filing their claims um, is the transportation. So as we're more, we connect them with the services. And I mean, the, the claims businesses are big. That's, that's what we do. That's, I mean, I have two appeals sitting on my desk. That's why it looks so bad. Um, you know, I mean, that's, that's really what we do. So I we can try to come back with some uh, estimates and some rehab. You know, like these new carpet that needs painting again. Painting can get done by my forces. It's the only, going to be those things that are code driven. You know, at the farm. The only reason I bring up that other one, though, thank you. Even if we said, yeah, we're going to build a building tonight, we voted on it. We're, we're two to three years old. Right. Right. So right. if you can just pick that other one up at whatever the cost, if they're willing to, you know, dicker it's, with us, and we come up with something. At least we still you have more room and it's more advantageous for you and the veterans. And it's just one of the things you're gonna have to spend money on until we come up with a plan to build a building. The only problem with just storing mm -hmm. one in is, is really we we just need the extra space in order to house the you know all of our all of our staff. So I mean using some of it for storage, absolutely, but we really need the extra space to have. The right amount of offices. How long have you been in this single office? Since 2015. So I would think it's all cost dependent because if you're only talking about two or three years, I know I say only, it's a long time. But if you've been there for seven, eight years, I mean, in the scheme of things, what's another two or three? If it's not 
cost effective. I mean, we shouldn't just throw money at this to because you could, if it's easier to go somewhere else and give them a nicer, better, more convenient place. I agree right? with you there. I'm just saying if you no, no, I know, but I'm just saying five thousand dollars more. Well, I wasn't, you know, I just wanted you to know that we had that in unallocated funds. I have no idea. I didn't, I didn't get estimates. I didn't know if I could move right. forward and I didn't know who was going to be responsible for actually doing the, the renovations, whether buildings and grounds was going to do that or CMH. So um, <coughs> I'm not saying we need to spend the entire 85,000, just that we have it. And the other thing I'm thinking is we have a ton of projects for buildings and grounds. Might not even be feasible to have our own guys doing it. Yeah, that's the simple stuff. That well, we and, our, and our primary carpenter is in Africa. I, I know what they're doing. So uh, not, the, not the drywall is the most difficult thing to do. They are down full time staff person. Yeah. Is CMH is allowing us to take walls down and things like that? Um, they have in the past. But I didn't get a I didn't get a straight answer from from Brian on that. It seems so, like we're it doesn't seem like so I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, the the I mean the the wall, they're like cubicles that reach the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, but there's they a lot of quite. I mean, we if, we, 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 we got the cart way ahead of the horse on this. Sounds mm -hmm. like to me. I mean, we're paying them rent. I mean, I would think they would be the ones that have to do the renovations if we want them done. We're paying them rent. Why why should we go in? And these do proposal it? as as it, as it sits. Right. Mm -hmm. if you want, the lease proposal is as it sits. Right. So if you wanted changing, <coughs> you wanted carpet, if you wanted painting, if you wanted, no, I'm sure they'll do it, but it's going to be, a, and they'll probably spread it over the life of the, uh, of the, of the lease of rental wage. CMH could charge for the other wage. That's a good question. I'm going to say as a leasehold agreement, I didn't have to worry about that. The space is also, you know, unique as a former hospital. It's kind of a thin office here. It's, it's difficult to have a square movement. You're, really, you're not going to change the pathway internally to walk around because of the way the building was used when it was originally a hospital. So again. The rationale as to why we have been thinking long range about do we stay here, do we move, but then the complexity is what does the veteran lose by us moving away? It's an old building. It's, it's, it's an old building. <sighs> Better than let, us, let us throw some numbers together. I'll work yeah. with the hospital. Uh, let's all this in the basement, the courthouse. What they may do. Mr. There, are, yeah, there, are there are any possibilities that the veterans clinic will be pulled over there? Because I know Columbia County has been trying to grab that from us for years. There's always a possibility. Their um, their lease is every five years as well, and it comes up, so it comes up the same time as ours. And they, they just renewed, but um, you know, with different proposals for closing some of the main the main facilities, the the, the VAMCs, um, there there has been talk about whether whether this one would expand. Um, and then need to move into a different space, or they would pull this one all together. So I mean, that's always that's always something that you know I keep my ear to the ground about. I, that goes back to Chris Gibson here. here. Yeah, we, we had a we had a, we had to go to him and say, "Come on, you're yeah, We had a lobby him big time. Charlie, remember that? And uh, we we just about lost it at that point. We 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 saved it. We'd hate to go through that again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have five action items. Number one, authorizing agreement, Green County Department of Human Services, Aging and MSS Electronic DBA Life Phone. I'll move that. Do we have a second? And and um, we have a second is handled. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carry. Stephanie, is that new service? New service or just new carry? It's a new company that provides better service at a better price for the client. Okay. okay. Authorizing agreement, Green County Department of Human Services, Aging and Visitors, Visiting Nurses Home. Rivera. 
Members, Green County Board of Electrical Examiners. Let him turn in. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's nice and loud. That was good. <laughs> Budget <laughs> amendment, Green County Board of Elections, Cybersecurity Remediation Grant. Lavera. True. <laughs> True. Thank you, Legislator. True. Legislator True. Oh, it's a good thing I got thick skin. I'll say. <laughs> all right, all of any, all of, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any <laughs> do I hear? Do I? Do I hear an adjournment? I will no, think. No, no, yeah, yeah. One one number five. five. One more. We do. Number five. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I totally lost control here. Totally. <laughs> Budget amendment, human services, transportation system. Handle. Overbaugh. Handle Overbaugh. My <laughs> God, we are working with gas here. Sorry, Governor Hogan. Uh, <laughs> all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Thank you all. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I will second that. Thank you all. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Top that, Jim. <laughs> Not even gonna try. Oh my gosh. Maybe Scott can do it though. I don't know. <laughs> 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 the Print Public Works Committee to order at six twenty eight. We'll start with the Highway Superintendent's report. It was a quiet January. Um, unfortunately, for right away was also quiet, which delayed some of these projects that we have uh, coming up. Kenner 83 Culvert and Pedestrian Bridge in the town of Hunter. The projected letting date is not until next month. It was supposed to be this month. Timberlake as well. Um, Culver Road is not expected to get right away clearance um, for due to right away, and that is expected to be let in April. Kenneru 2 culvert replacement in the town of Lexington. That is still uh, on schedule for spring of this year to start back up. Platte Clove Road Bridge in the town of Hunter. We submitted that project for Bridge New York. We should know the results of that next month, in March. We also submitted Kenneru 20 Sunside Road Bridge over the Bowery Creek for Bridge New York <coughs> funding as well. So hopefully and we'll find out what the results are next month. Kenner one culvert replacement in town of Halkett. We submitted for a CWC uh, flood hazard mitigation funding. We received that. Creighton Manning is was awarded the design. Preliminary design is underway. That is expected to be constructed in 2024. Kenner 23C. Culvert replacement in the town of Jewett. We're working with Green County Soil and Water Conservation District for design funding for that as well as construction. That is supposed to be constructed or expected to be constructed in 2024. That's if all right away goes according to plan, which we haven't had seen in a while. Uh, we're developing 2023 paving program. With CHIPS funding this year, <clears throat> held at the five-year plan that the governor has put out, should get us another solid year of, of paving. We continue to do road maintenance with the weather that we've seen recently. We've been able to get ahead of some of this ditching work and some brush cl uh, clearing. We've also assisted some municipalities with both hauling equipment and tree trimming. Solid Waste Department, Kuksaki Transfer Station has been reopened. That was reopened on December 13th. Everything is going well. Um, so far, we've heard some 
good things about that station. Scott, have you guys seen an uptick in garbage coming into there from like Southern Albany, you know? The, the Not sure where it's, whatever. I mean, we've seen an uptick just because of what, I mean, it's on, it's fully open, whereas the other temporary station was, we had limited operations there. So we have seen an uptick. We haven't seen the considerable uptick as we did in Hunter. Sure. That was substantial. That was almost a, but the floodgates open. We haven't seen that in Kuksaki yet. Um, <coughs> going back to the Casco Transfer Station Recycling Facility, the single stream building, that's moving forward. We should see that substantially completed by the end of this month. Hopefully we can get that open, transfer the operations from the rear of the building to that new facility. We can clean things up and start shifting some of the, uh, some of the equipment around in that station. Uh, we continue to do our equipment purchasing plan, trying to get a replacement and or just repair procedures going on for our equipment, both solid waste and highway. Um, you'll see probably in the next coming months, some more proposals for purchasing equipment. Hopefully we can get that going. Fortunately, we have not seen a tremendous amount of movement in procurement. So a lot of equipment is 11 to 13 months out. So even if I purchase it this year, we're not going to see it until 2024 at best. So. Any questions? Scott, uh, with your help and Paul's help, we're able to open the uh, recycling center in Carroll this week. Uh, we're opening four days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, nine to two, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and eight to one on Saturday. <clears throat> the first week is, uh, went very well. I'm very receptive by the people in Carroll. And uh, thank you for all your, your hard work and bringing that back in and getting it open. Absolutely. That's going to go along with the other four locations that we have. So <laughs> hopefully now that it's manned, it'll be controlled and it'll be successful. Scotty, cold patching? Do I see cold patching going on? We do. I mean, the, the asphalt plants are OBX. Right, I know that. That's why. So I, we do cold patch. Is that something that lasts a long time or is that actually blow up? No. Does it not last long at all? No. It's pretty much trying to avoid any yeah. building any from the water penetration? Not really. I mean, it's the first snow event usually. Once the plow goes down, it peels it back up. Scott, you guys. Um, sorry, go ahead, Ed. I was going to ask about County Route 83. It's like, it feels like we've gone on about two years trying to get this season. It is. It's, we, we were heading in the right direction until our, our right of my specialist, they went in. They were trying to get a hold of a property owner. It was difficult to find them and once we did those agreements were made but then trying to get him to sign off on a check to re re receive it was difficult so i think we're at the stage of letting it so hopefully we, we've reached that point of all property owners have been contacted they've received their checks um, and the state can sign off on right away are you referring to bail the, the property no, owner. the Vale Resorts actually was we're settled with them. We're settled with them. It was another property owner. Ski Bull Road. That's it. It my memory. Yes. As uh, I was driving down it this weekend, uh, just before I was heading towards the ski slope from 214, okay. so I was heading west. Uh, on the right hand side, just before you come to Hunter Highlands, there's a big Right by the guide rail, it's a big drop off. It's, it's getting undermined and the hole is considerable. And there's a culvert there that goes all the way out to Dolan's Lake. It's uh, no. Not that location? No. This is before this is before you come to I didn't get a chance to stop and get, get my bearings exactly where it is, but it's it's before Hunter Highlands. It's the, the bank is sloughed off. There's no delineation on the on the um, shoulder or anything. The creek side people. or the Creek side, trying to creek side. I mean, it's probably 15 feet long, three, four feet deep. And the, it almost like the guide rail's just suspended there. Okay, so we'll certainly have to take a look. 
look at the tag root 61. We have, I mean, we've looked, we've looked into it. I mean, we could spend uh, a tremendous, tremendous amount of engineering to try to figure out how to excavate that down. Most likely it's going to be excavate down to uh, stable material and put lightweight fill. It's a tremendous project, another several million dollars to, it's just the extent, the whole, the length of it is, it would span two different slides, right? It's, we've discussed it with an engineering firms. It's a, is it a drivability issue or is there a potential for um, catastrophic failure? They've all said no, there's no potential for catastrophic failure. It's basically a drivability issue. Um, we're looking into doing something with the lower slide of the bridge, which we had discussions with the engineering firms. We're going to actually implement that. That's a lot of civil. But the upper slide, it's the slides are very expensive, as we saw in Kennedy too. It's not going to fix itself either. It's <laughs> and we continue to make sure it's, it's drivable and. and when, it does become active. There was a couple of years that actually went dormant for a while. Uh, I hate to say that we're hoping that it goes dormant for a, a little while longer so we can at least save some more funds to go into a major slide like we did on two. Unfortunately, these aren't chips eligible. Right. But we, we are definitely monitoring if it starts to become more more of an issue like Kenner 2 was, that was dropping several feet, where we had actually had to address it immediately or else that we were going to lose the whole road. The hazmat days, there's going to be two again this year. Just one? Just one in the valley. Down here? Yeah. It's not so sucks. We didn't pay to have it all there. We didn't see. A tremendous amount of it was successful in the fact that we didn't see as many as we, we would see down in the valley. Splitting it up, basically, we saw it split up the valley as well as the mountain top. My only suggestion would be that if you had it like two years, I mean, people knew about it. It was it was advertised and stuff, but once you get used to going up, you know what I mean. If you had it again one more year. You might see an influx of more because they said, "Oh, that was great." You know, I mean, word of mouth. The consistency of it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, you, just to say, have it one year and say, "Well, that was not really that great." Doesn't really. Well, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't that it wasn't great. It was is the fact that it 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 split up. We actually saw residents from the valley going up there as well. So, it kind of split up both the mountaintop and the valley. Really, is that so good? Now you're diluting. Well, it takes expensive to get these guys, the contractors on. No, I know, but what so, I was saying is, if if the two different things, people might have missed the one down here. <coughs> and said, "Well, I missed that one. I wish I didn't." But now I can go up there. I mean, they're they're not doing it out of convenience. They weren't going from down here up to Wyndham because they're saying, "Oh, that's a better drop or better drive." You know what I mean? They were doing it either because they couldn't make the first one. They they didn't have the <laughs> material there. I just think it would be beneficial to keep the two of them, try it another year to see how it goes. You're collecting more and more because there's people that are on a mountaintop that say, gosh, I got to drive all the way down there. And there's people that say the same thing. I'm down here. I don't want to drive all the way up. I mean, obviously people do it, but I think it's beneficial for the county to get rid of the materials. And I think that that's just a good program. I'll take a look at what what the costs were and see if I mean, really it really depends on what the what the county is willing to pay for an additional day. Scott, what's uh, you guys got some kind of plan for the Catskill Transfer Station floor repair? Yeah, well, on that's that's going to be the next big item in Catskill. That's the main floor, tipping floor. It's yeah. it's in dire yeah. need of it's in dire need of repair. When was the last the initial repair of that floor? Was back in 2006. Yeah, I was going to say we, we did some remedial concrete someplace. I thought it was. Cast We're continually doing a couple. Yeah, we have filled holes. It's been. I thought they resurfaced. Yeah, they 16 or 17. 
I thought it was a resurface or something. But we're looking at different, different, more extensive repair options. We've seen different material, some quick set materials that can be done in a weekend. Yep. I mean, that's basically the most difficult part of doing anything on that tipping floor is closing it. As you know, I mean, that, that station closing it for a day is incredibly difficult. There's not a lot of a lot of places to shift operations. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. And moving right into proposed action items, authorizing advertisement for bids. Do well, Martinez. Martinez and Handel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. So carry. <coughs> Contracts for miscellaneous bridge contractors. Language. Village and Lake. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Authorize an extension of contract for the operation of a household hazardous waste collection event. Martinez. Martinez and Handel. And um, on that, Jim, can we can we say that we will do the one and possibly two? I hate to not, not include. Yeah, it's, it's a, that's in the specs already. We already have that. Oh, it is, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I read days on there, and I when we put it out for for bid, bid. we've always put for the just possibility of an additional day. Oh, okay, I, I, but I'm not quite sure if we're going to get another day this late because we've already scheduled the one for the down below. I'm sorry to say that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Authorize and purchase the trash compactor and receiving container for Wyndham Transfer Station. I'll hold that one. Village. Village second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Cash drop it. Really? Can I get a motion or anything else from before? Motion to close. Motion to close. I'll second. Uh, Lennon and Gander. We are closed. Ready? I'd like to open Economic Development Tourism Committee at 644. Um, we have with us tonight April Ernst, the director of the IDA. Give us an update. Uh, as Linda mentioned, I'm the executive director of the Green County IDA. I am joined by my chairman of the board, Eric Hogland. Um, I was asked to just come in and give you a quick update on the parks. Uh, in Catskill. So exit 21 East is where the quality insight used to be. Um, we're calling that now the Gateway Green Commercial Park. Um, so I think the last time I reported to you, we were working with Stewart's. Stewart's has signed uh, their contract. They've paid for their land. They're ready to go to the uh, planning board for site approval. Um, they are waiting for us to finish up our subdivision. So there's going to be three pads in that park. Um, up front where the tourism center is now will be Stewart's and the tourism center will be moved across the street where the old Stewart's building is. So we've been meeting um, with the county on uh, the design phase that'll be moving forward. The hotel has signed their contract. There's, they put money in escrow. They're in their due diligence period. Uh, and then we have the third pad, which is gonna be approximately two acres. We're gonna market that to restaurants. Any questions on that park? Well, can I just ask, is there a projected timeline? For well, Stewart's is ready to go, and so is the hotel for their, their site plan approval. Uh, Stewart's wants to build this spring. <coughs> the hotel has to go through their due diligence and make sure that they have the brand, the flag signed, everything like that done. So how long is that? How They're long looking at building probably in 2024. At least that's what the contract <coughs> dates are. They, 
would like to move it up if they can, but it's all just getting all the other contracts signed. Does the IDA have to put in the service road and the four lines? So when, order? yep, we're, we are building the road and infrastructure in um, straight back towards where the hotel is, and then they will stub in. Finish. Yep, and when do you plan on doing that? We're going to be doing that at the same time Stewart's is building. Okay. So once the subdivision is done, we'll uh, put it out for engineering. Uh, Delaware is working on putting out our bid documents. Soil borings are being done too. Anything else? I think that's it. Katie gave us a salmon grant to contribute towards the, the public road as well. It's still active and it's reimbursed. It's a small amount, it's 50,000. Okay. I believe that's in the performance. So go over the bridge to exit 21 West. That's going to be Austin Glen's Industrial Park. Um, so the uh, Columbia Memorial Hospital option has expired and we are um, moving away from the idea of a medical facility there. Uh, we're going to be marketing it towards retail, warehouse distribution, professional offices, um, maybe for the front. There's about 12 acres buildable there. Then there's some patches up in the back that we're looking at maybe doing housing stuff. So that kind of flows with our uh, original plan for the GEIS. Uh, Keith Valentine and, I, Valentine and I met with the county <clears throat> to discuss options for the community health building. Uh, we're still in Fox working uh, with maybe moving Columbia Memorial to our Kalkberg site, which is in New Baltimore. I showed them land there. Um, it's less expensive. It's 100% shovel ready, um, trying to keep them interested in doing some kind of medical facility still in the county. Uh, so that's the left part of exit 21 West. Uh, Bell Jar Holdings purchased where the old garage is. Um, so there's a white garage across from Camp Town. We sold that last year. They've been doing their due diligence. They've been meeting with um, uh, the county uh, to do some of the site work for maybe moving an easement. Um, so once their site plan gets approved, they can move their 1950s diner, which is gonna be renovated into a bar. And then the garage will be re renovated into something they're calling uh, local dairy. So that'll be a, a gourmet food market. So that's exit 21 West. We'll be putting up billboards also to market that land right off through it. What do you plan on doing the billboards? Um, I just redesigned the layout and the map, so I just got to get the vinyl printed. So that'll be going up soon. You said it's going to be like an industrial. You're marketing it towards industrial and warehouse. Um, the original GIS had uh, options for maybe retail along the front, <clears throat> and then distribution towards the back, and then housing up on the hill. So, so retail like poles or something like that. I would love that. <laughs> um, it, some of the, the um, developers that I've been speaking to are worried about rooftops and mm -hmm. what they can pull within a five mile radius. But if they can market it right off the over, where it overlooks the throughway, I think they could pull numbers from the throughway itself. So, but yes, I would think retail so we can get sales tax dollars in there. And are you thinking of senior citizen housing? Um, workforce housing and senior. That would be options that we would try to market to. Because I know we had a senior, a senior came here at one point and, you know, they had talked about us, you know, the need for more senior citizen housing. Yeah, it's been on our agenda several times. Mm -hmm. We put together a task force. We've been working with James at the county level, um, seeing what kind of incentive package the IDA could do for housing to draw in more workforce housing or middle-class housing even. The IDA can be involved in stuff like that? Yes, we can do it. <laughs> it's for the uh, quality of life and benefit. So if we wanted to bring in more jobs, where are those jobs going to be placing their workers? So. Uh, April, when that road is done here, where you got Stewart's and the hotel going in on the east, is then the county have to maintain that road? It will be transferred over to the county. But similar to uh, Green Business Park, that road's been in there for 20 years, and I don't think we ever had to pave it or repave it. <coughs> Getting close, actually. <laughs> 
Sean walks that road, so he knows. Yes. But yeah, that was <laughs> that's why I asked about the cold patches. <laughs> we'll do updates and uh, build a dispatch for maintaining it for the county road. And April, what about do you ever get any hits from companies with advanced manufacturing? Uh, to the IDA, I mean, it seems like we're just doing warehousing and, you know, these pads for restaurants or Well, stores. whenever I do get leads from the state, we see if they'll be placed somewhere within the county. We, we look at infrastructure, some of it, sometimes they get turned down because of um, not enough workforce or yeah. you know, it depends on how many jobs are going to be created. I mean, we've got three to four hours. We've got road, river, and rail. <laughs> comes through Green County. We don't have a runway, but we have three or four, and that's usually, you know, we got opportunity for industry wealth production as opposed to just warehousing. I don't know why. I'd love to hear why uh, you know we don't seem to get any hits on that. We work with our website hosting what land is available. I present things to the state of different sites. Um, let's see, when I was hired in 2002, it was the direction of the county to get land shovel ready, which we've done. We have Green Business and we have Culpeburg, and then Ferguson came in. So we continue to move in that direction. I'd like to see more technology coming our way to data, things like that. Question for you though, you brought up like warehousing along with retail, <clears throat> what's going on with Save a Lot in Kosaki? Because uh, the rumor is uh, okay, so that's going to affect quite a few people. Not only the truck, you know, put true. servicing places so across the road. Save a Lot entered our business park as our first tenant. They were up and running in two thousand three. Their building is only twenty years old. How long was the pilot? Uh, their pilot was fifteen years. So they went back on the tax roll in two thousand eighteen. <clears throat> They've been paying full taxes, which is currently about. $516,000 between the town, county, and school, and they've been paying it. So as long as they own the building, they're required to pay their taxes. So the tax base should stay level. I think the building is assessed at about $12 million. Um, I have personally received a dozen calls on that building. Um, they're all being referred to their general counsel. So if anybody has anybody interested in that building, I can forward it to Save Alliance General Counsel. I'm not sure if they're gonna lease or sell it, um, but it's not going to sit vacant very long. It's relatively new building. It's state-of-the-art uh, refrigeration, and it sits on 30 acres back there in the business park. At their highest level, they had about 105 employees in that building. They currently only have 30. So um, I reached out to their HR department. They are working with those 30 employees to get interviews at other distribution centers. So Empire Merchants is hiring, Ferguson is hiring, Esadante. Uh, do common. So they're arranging those interviews. They've also um, offered them resume assistance, things like that. Uh, so obviously, if another distribution company goes in there, they're going to want to hire employees as well. So I know they're keeping on the groundskeeper <clears throat> until, so they're going to close February 25th. So let's see. It's two weeks out. Yeah. And then also um, Senator Hinch's office called me and I put them in touch with uh, Columbia Green Workforce and they're setting up a job fair for the impacted employees as well. As for the trucking company that follows them, that site will probably go up for um, sale also. And there's been interest in that as well, renovating that site. So I don't feel like either of these are gonna sit vacant very long. And obviously in Green County, we don't have a lot of empty warehouses. So when leads do come in, this will be our only one right now. Any word on like why they would even become vacant? I mean, if it's that robust of a, you know, industry, it seems to be Well, say a lot, that was a corporate here. discussion. But that, that came down from corporate. They closed two distribution centers. They're going wholesale. There's, they never, um, so I want to say back in 2003, when they did put the distribution center in, they were going to follow with having grocery stores open all in this area that never occurred. So they're shipping long distances. So that's why they, they made that corporate decision to close that site. Hey, April, do you know the square footage of that building? 330,000 square feet on 30 acres. 
Hey, was there any interest in the old Dinah Bills building down below me? <clears throat> oh, somebody owns that. We can talk later. I thought they got held up on some site work. They got, they, they did not follow the proper procedures. Well, I think he's going to bail out. Okay, then I'll market that one again. Yeah, that's, that's up to you for Warren. We can definitely put it back on the inventory if it becomes available. It's just somebody owns it and they were going to do something there. Weren't you? Weren't you meeting with them? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> potential, um, potential food manufacturing that needs to expand for warehousing space and uh, that site. But you don't meet with them. Most of that was happened last week. We'll put it this week. So, Thank you. We partner with the IDA when, they, when there are vacant parcels. We put it on our website. We put it out on our advertising. Are there any other questions about anything else? I, I have something. Uh, I met with Bill Jar, and uh, we reviewed the, the T, and there's that issue of moving that drainage easement at 21 West. And I've requested that when that deed gets reformed, we'll do the new strip and gets reserved to the county as well. Okay, yeah, how long is working on that? Yeah, you yeah. okay. Thanks. Anybody have anything else for April? We thank you for coming. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. I'll take a couple days off for coming. Okay, we have three action items on the agenda tonight. Uh, number one is supporting appointing board of directors. For Green County Economic Development Corporation. Eulich and Handel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Number two, established capital project number 129, extension of broadband. Handel. True. Bloomer. <laughs> Handel, <laughs> true, and is Bloomer. It, is this a question here? Uh, for <laughs> are these, is this ready to go? I mean, uh, contracts are pretty much done. They keep adding some road segments or clarifying road segments from the providers. You know, it's pretty much done. And Ed and I have talked about it a couple of times, but I've got to get the package again. Uh, I'm hoping next week they'll actually be out to the provider. Uh, we've been in contact with the providers frequently since it was approved by the legislature for the awards because it does take a lot of conversation with them about what we're funding and what the parameters are. So we're really close to be out soon. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed. Number three, budget amendment, Green County Economic Development Corporation. Handel. Handel. Oh, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's passed and we are done unless there's something else. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Andal. Second. And second, Lavera. We're closed. Thank you very much. Good evening, call the government operations <laughs> at 7 p.m. We have nine proposed action items, so I'll start with number one, resolution opposing Governor Hochul's ban of gas stoves I and drink. other new fossil fuel heating equipment, and I'll make that motion. I'll second, second, second. 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 I'll second, I'll second, second that as well. Ask all members that that's just all members. Separate. All members, I am. That sounds good. You and Harry, but yeah, you want to pull it out. Number two, setting public hearing on local law introductory number two of 2023, adjusting the weighted vote of the Green County Legislature. Over, Bob. I'll Aye. second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Greg, just uh, what are we did doing? we get a report on this email to us? Yes, what are we doing? 
It's in there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's in the agenda. It's well, no, I agenda. see it, but it, it said in there there was a report. Yeah, we had a report probably. So can we get that email? What are we doing ago? What's the difference about? Send that or? I can I can with the so what? Could you I'd just it? like to read it before. Can you explain a little bit? What's the difference? What are we doing? Well, he he did. You did nine present vote. some differences. Uh, it was nine votes. It was nine vote difference. Oh, you did make a presentation. Yeah, yeah it was just yeah. because of the census, the outcome right. right. census. Right. Okay. The, thing is, um, the decennial census requires that we adjust the vote of <coughs> individual members of the board based on population. Um, but there's, uh, we have to file, follow the U.S. Constitution as well as the uh, New York State Voting Act. And in that, we have to look at the raw population numbers, and then we have to adjust them based on a court case. Um, and the standard that's used is this Bansoff Index that looks at weighted vote voting coalitions. Um, and we contracted with a company to um, do that work, run the numbers, and do the uh, calculations. Um, and it has to do with voting power. power. It's analogous to the difference between uh, the popular vote and um, the electoral vote, where if you have one town that is so large in population with just raw numbers, it would always outvote the smaller uh, communities. So the Bansoff Index and the law requires that we look at weighted voting power coalitions so that even the smallest town always has the ability to be part of a winning coalition um, at a certain you know, percentage of, of, of their population. So we went through all of those calculations. It's in the report. The report will be available um, for the public um, prior to the public hearing as well. But the actual numbers that were adjusted based on the Banzoff Index um, had an impact to three districts. We lied uh, several months ago, but yeah. we went through what those were, and it's a it's a very small number. The number, the actual numbers from 2000 to 2010 to 2020 have really not varied that greatly. We're not talking about a large number. Yeah, no, I have them that here. Tim and I are going to split those nine votes. No, it was the increase in population was in Greenville, Hunter, Wyndham, and Prattsville. So once Carol, you you. Earned six more votes. Oh, wow. Right. <laughs> Atska, we lost 13. Cooksaki went up 17 and a half. Athens went down 26. Greenville was added 11. New Baltimore went down 23. Wyndham went down 14. So from when, what I'm when, the sense, yeah, when the census comes out, um, it's the population by 10. Those are the raw numbers. And then when you run the Nansov um, formula, the recommendation was to adjust three districts. District number nine was adjust with an increase of 12 votes to that district. District number seven was decreased by seven votes. District number six would decrease by four votes. Remember, the population, <clears throat> while it didn't change a lot, some towns went up, some towns went down. Um, that established the raw votes and then we equalized them based on this voting um, formula for the adjusted vote. And it's in that report. The, the report's five, six pages. It's, uh, it, it's pretty clear um, the methodology that was used. And there were some other counties around us that did not use the correct formulas. We went back to the table a couple times. How we achieve proportionality is just by uh, adjusting the weighted votes. The, when the legislature went from a board of supervisors to a legislature decades ago, um, those those set. Um, and the New York State Voting Act encourages towns as the as the union. So every census moving forward with those numbers will just adjust the weighted vote of each of the districts. The districts don't have to change. So some municipalities have gone from more recently towards the supervisors to legislate legislature. And they have to go through a whole districting process to boundaries and all other portions of the New York State voting act that they have to follow. Ours has already been done. Ours is just the straight adjustment of weighted votes out of districts. 
Okay, number three, resolution authorizing the chairman of the Green County Legislature to enter into a pilot with FG Noriel, PB, LLC, and others. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Number four, American Rescue Plan Act, Village of Tannersville. Like Overball. Like an overball. Anyone opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number five, budget amendment, Green County Clerk, digitization of records. Here, Hobart. Lanner and Hobart, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Very good. Number six, correcting assessment roll. Town of Durham, Robert S. and Maureen Foley, tax map ID number 33.00-2-38. Overbond. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> Number seven, correcting assessment roll, town of Durham, Nicholas, Rama to <laughs> Rama to Cospolis. <laughs> Tax map ID 34.03-4-47. Martin has an overbought. Martin has an overbought. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Credit right to the chairman for pronouncing that one. <laughs> Wait till the next one. We can find it. Number eight, denying the correction <laughs> of assessment roll. Town of Jewett, Arthur and Irene I. Horowitz. Right. Tax map ID 129.00-2-18.1. Leg. Leg. Overbaugh. Leg and Overbaugh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Carry. Number nine, denying the correction of assessment roll. Town of Jewett, Arthur and Irene, Hi Horowitz, <laughs> tax map ID 129.00-2-38. Overbaugh. Leg. Overbaugh and leg. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Is there anything else to come before government operations? Chairman Davis, a couple questions we got right here. What, what's this pilot amount for this solar panel? How large of a array is this? It's uh, actually four different arrays, four projects combined into one. The one's been operational for two years. The smallest one to do is about 600 kilowatts. Uh, the other three are roughly between 1.8 and 2.2 megawatts each. So they combine for a total of about six and a quarter megawatts. We're getting 8,000 megawatt, the same as we got. This one was, the, this was the predicator to us passing our solar pilot law last year for 8750 megawatts. Um, this has been going on since March 5th of last year. We finally made the deal. <laughs> um, and they they lowballed us to start um the county we settled actually last may on the eight thousand megawatt with them and we're in agreement um, to bring it up to every other project that we've done uh the town of new baltimore and the town of uh, the Koksaki school district helped the company out for a community host agreement uh which we had done with which other municipalities had done or school districts had done um, that deal did not get in until December. So that's where it's a big hang up. We still have two more projects in the works that do not fall under our solar pile law after that. Is the county, is, is is the county allowed to put a moratorium on solar fields? We don't have planning authority. Yeah, yeah. Well, are we allowed? Yeah. Be a town town? We have a planning board. It's advisory. Board. The towns can do it. Yeah, the towns can do it. They're, I mean, they're in charge of land management. 
How many megawatts is that 10 acre field the county has in Carroll? 2.5. 4.5. 4.5 megawatts, and what's it produce? Um, yeah, the other one uh, question I had for you, did anybody else get an email about uh, some type of uh, form could take place with some people like uh, Greg Lampman from NYSERDA and at all? And it said members of the Climate Action Council, which are the ones who wrote the recommendation for this governor to put gas stoves and firewood burning and things like that. And I just didn't know if anybody else got that email. I, didn't know. I think they keep I'm going. glad I got that email. <laughs> 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 no idea what's gonna Maybe it was Farm Bureau. Maybe it was Farm Bureau. If I see if I when I get home maybe I'll send it all to you. <clears throat> So is there anything, there anything else to come before government operations? Motion to adjourn. I'll second. No. Go ahead. I'll second it. We are closed. Now oh. comes the big mm, Right. I hope you wrote down how that was pronounced. <laughs> okay. Everybody keep Let's still. Start. We'll get through this here. These <laughs> names. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Akalaka, I'm Octopus. <laughs> Ready? Okay, here we go. Keep still. Several proposed action items. The first is the resolution authorizing the chairman of the Green County Legislator enter in a pilot with SG, Norel, PV, LLC, and others. Davis. Mr. Davis. Blank. Lake seconds in all favor. Aye. 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 Opposed, that's carried. Number two, authorizing cross contract. Was, was there an opposition there? No. I was close. I just, I just, I'm I'm close. Close. That's why I'm asking. Ray, nothing against you, but I just. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Can we continue? Go ahead. Go ahead. There we go. Number two, authorizing contract, Green County Deputy Association. I'll make that. I'll second that. All in favor, any discussion? Aye. 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 I'm a no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hold. That's opposed. Fair. Okay, number three, American Rescue Plan Act, really to Tannersville. Lake. Mr. Lake. Lavera. Lavera seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number four, authorized agreement with Green County EMS Consul Inc. For EMT training. Lennon. I'll second it. Where did somebody Lennon. else jump in there? Yeah, I, Lennon and Overbar. Oh, okay. yeah, we had a lot of votes there. <laughs> Lennon and Overbar. Thank you, General. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, that's carried. Five authorized contract for miscellaneous bridge contractors. Martin Martin has Martin has Overbar. All in favor? Aye. 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 All carried. Six authorized extension contract for the operation of a household hazardous waste collective collection event. One more. All in favor? Aye. 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 All that's carried. Seven authorized purchase trash compactor and receiving container for Wyndham Transfer Station. All more. All more. Lake. 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 Mr. Lake. He woke up. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's garbage. Got it. <laughs> Number eight. Authorized agreement Green County Department of Human Services Aging and MSS Electronics DBA Life Phone. Lennon. Overball. Lennon and Miss Overball. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's also carried. Nine. Authorized agreement Green County Department of Human Services Aging and Visiting Nurses Home. Martin Welch, Blake, 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 all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 10, authorized agreement, Green County Mental Health Community Services Board and the Mental Health Association of Columbia, Green County, Inc. Davis. Davis. A second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's also carried. 11, authorized agreement, Green County Community Service 
board and the Mental Health Association of Columbia Green County for MCAT service. Over Paul. Over Paul and Mr. Hobart. Hobart. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's also carried. Paul was authorized agreement Green County Mental Health, CSB, and Northeast Parent and Child Society and Budget Amendment. Over Paul. Over Paul. Davis. Davis, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's carried. 13. Authorized to contract Mental Health Association Columbia. Green County, Inc., Youth Clubhouse, and Budget Amendment. Lavera, Mr. Hobart. Hobart. Mr. Hobart. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's also carried. 14, authorized agreement, Green County Family Planning is mentioned by Biz, Inc., Well IQ. Hmm. Oh, Davis. <laughs> Davis. Oh, God. <laughs> This overall second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Oh, that's carried. 15 approving individual provider contracts, preschool special education program. Full board. Davis. Mr. Lake seconds it. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, that's <laughs> Mr. Lake. Well, he is a Mr. Number 16. Oh. Related service provider contract preschool special education program. Over Bob. Over. 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 Second. Over. Oh, that's all for sure. 17 approving related services for service provide provider contract preschool special education program. Board Over. 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 Then no bar. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Number 18, increasing related service provider rate preschool special education program. Full board. Davis. Davis second. Aye. 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 Close. That's also carried. Number 19, increasing. Parent violates reimbursement rate preschool special education program. Overball. No second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. 20 reappointing members, Green County Board of Election Examiners. I'll take that. Tommy. Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried. 21 authorized the county to assess administration. Aye. Fee regarding MREM collection 22 MREM proceeding. Aye. Board. No board. I'm second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. That's carried. 22 resolution of accepting second bid for MREM properties. No board. No board. Davis. Davis second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. That's also carried. 23 establish the capital project number 123, Green County Justice Center. Leonard. Leonard. Davis. Davis seconds it. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, that's carried. Number 24. Patty's favorite uh, one here. <laughs> Established capital project number 129, extension of broadband. I'll, I'll introduce I'll second that. I'll second that. I'll go on leg. Go on leg. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Oh, that's carried. 25 budget amendment, Green County Clerk. Digitation. Digitation. Station, it's a of records. Lennon, Hobart. Lennon, Hobart. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, that's also carried. 26, budget member, Green County Economic Development Corporation. Overball? It's overball. Lavera. There are seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, that's carried. 27, budget member, Green County Board of Election, Cyber Security Remediation Grant. Davis. Davis. Over Paul. Over Paul. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 That's carried. 28. Budget member, Green County Public Health, Green County Family Planning, Green County Early Intervention. Davis. Over Paul. Davis and Over Paul. Over Paul and Davis. Take your pick. Doesn't matter. <laughs> all in favor. Aye. Aye. Oh, that's also carried. 29. Budget member, Human Service Transportation System. Over Paul. It's over Paul. I'll second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. That's carried. 30. Correcting system role, town of Durham, Robert S. and Maureen Foley. 
tax map ID number 33.00-2-38. Hobart. Hobart. Oh, yeah. Who second? I'll Thank second. You. Little general <laughs> seconds in. All in favor? All right. All right. Opposed? That's carried. Next one, I'll refer to you on this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a down a term. <laughs> Nicholas Ramatakopoulos. Thank you. Tax map ID 34 03 4 47. Davis, <laughs> Davis seconds it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's also carried. 32 to 9. Correction of Assessment Road, Town of Jew, and Arthur and Irene. Horowitz. That's close enough. Tax map ID number 129.00-2-18.1. Oh, Mr. Davis, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's carried. 33 to 9, the correction. Of the seven row town of Jude, Arthur and Irene of the War Railways. Tax map ID 129.00 2 38. Davis. Davis. A little general. One very short. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's carried. 34 authorization paid claims highway. Who, who wants to do that? Uh, Darryl Lake. Darryl. Bulich. Mr. Bulich seconds it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's carried. 35 authorization paid claims. I'll Hobart. take it. Mr. Hobart seconds it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. That's carried. That's the end of the resolution. <laughs> now we have the treasurer's report. We have what is the, our treasurer tonight. Are we getting some good news? Or I will do my report from here because that's a lecture. And I spent too many years behind a lecture. And I'm, I'm worried if I go up there, I'll have flashbacks. So <laughs> I'm going to sit back here. This is pretty simple. Uh, comparisons to 2022 and 23. Collections are up. Payments are down. Delinquent taxes are down. Sales tax is beyond explanation. It just. Going. Well, flying high. But the best news is that <laughs> our cash position as of Friday, $89 million. We don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> Any questions? That's it. Did we hear Mark uh, a lot of that? The last one. With how much of it is uh, earmarked? Uh, well, some of it has been, but an earmark is an earmark as long as it's an earmark and it cannot be an earmark. <laughs> Clear as mud. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Okay. Anything else coming for us? Motion to close. Second. 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 Sure. Thank you.